Happy New Year. Good morning. First Monday of 2022. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I've already told you that, but for the you sake of You told me show. that at midnight with my eyes closed. Your eyes were closed at nine. <laughs> <laughs> True story. I woke you up at midnight. I have to wait till like the last like 30 seconds before the ball drops for her watching it because she won't make it like a whole minute. Like even the 30 seconds, her eyes were like, I'm like 15 seconds in, I'm tapping her, hey, look. And then midnight, she was right back to sleep. Yeah. I get up Eventful. early, so I go to bed early. Night hours are not for me. <clears throat> Catch me in the morning. <laughs> So happy new year, everyone. Hope you're having a great 2022 so far. I believe it's going to be a phenomenal year. And you know what? We have to go into it believing that, declaring that, and standing on God's word when it comes to his plans for our life. We're going to start a brand new series this week, Red Light, Green Light. I got to be honest with you guys, I like green light better. And I got to be honest with you guys, Diana likes red light better, (laughs) right? Come on. Yeah. Depends. no, I no. like green lights. No, no. When I'm oh, when you're driving. Yeah. When I'm driving. All right, we're talking about life. Let's just not talk about driving here. Yes, driving green light all the way. But in life, I'm more of a yellow light kind of girl. Yellow, almost like you almost turn a red, and if you go through it, you got the camera took a picture of you. And when sent you necessary, a ticket. I floor it. <laughs> but with caution, I break. <laughs> all right, all right. She like said that in like a profound that was, emphasis. That might have been the weirdest emphasis on, like, on a statement you've ever made on the show. <laughs> With no. caution, I break. Yeah. <laughs> she sound like Yoda. Speaking Yoda over here. <laughs> break caution, I do, in 2022. So red light, green light. Stop saying yes to everything so we can say yes to God. That's the, that's the subtitle. We're going to also dive a little into managing your time well. You know, is there really such thing as managing your time well? Um, we're not just talking about time management for the sake of it. We're talking about really, right, the premise of this podcast is to um, follow your God-given purpose. So when we're talking about managing time well, it's not so we can sit around and do nothing. And, um, I mean, vacation, believe me, is is necessary. We're, we're due for one. But but I think that when we're going to get into some some things about exhaustion and, and so forth, but I think a lot of that can go, will go away. When we're saying no to some of the things we're saying yes to, and we're saying yes to God, because God, here's the thing, if God's way is the perfect way, if it's the right way, and if it was right for Jesus, you know, Jesus never, he never wasted time. Matter of fact, um, he, he went around doing good. And when, when some would say to him, you know, pull him aside or try to distract him, he even would come back and say, look, I have to be about my father's business. And so he didn't waste time. However, I I don't believe at all that Jesus was um, overwhelmed, anxious, you know, stressed out. And it's because he lived the life that God intended for him. So can I just say it this way? God, right, the sovereign God, the all-knowing, the almighty God knows better than we do. So stop saying yes to everything so we can say yes to God because it doesn't mean you do nothing. And it certainly doesn't mean you won't be accomplished. I believe that that's the true path to accomplishment. What it means when we manage our God-given time well is that we'll know when and when not to. Amen? And uh, that's what we're going to talk, talk about this week with red light and green light. And um, hopefully it's going to be a good, a good series. What do you think? You think it's going to be a good series? Let's hope. Yep. <laughs> let's hope. So let's start by saying, you know, ex- are you exhausted? You know, are you, you know, are you, do you feel empty? You know, maybe you feel enslaved, you know, to, to something. Maybe you feel enslaved to, you know, your time, your process. Maybe you feel enslaved to someone. You feel enslaved to, uh, to a job or to, you know, to a career or, you know, to something that you've, um, you're doing. So, you know, exhausted. Three E words there that you could write down and maybe you could, you know, apply empty or enslaved? Do, do these words describe you? Do they just describe what you feel, what you're walking through? And I believe that God never piles on more than we can handle. Matter of fact, there's scripture that back that, right? Jesus will never tempt us beyond what we, or allow us to be tempted beyond what we can handle. He'll make a way of escape. And I believe he never piles on more than we can handle. But it is imperative that we learn to say no 
to some of what we've been saying yes to. And, uh, make, you know, we're talking, if we're talking to, you know, to, to the audience, I mean, this is one of these things you're going to tag everyone, but you know, you've, you've rolled up your sleeves, you, you know, you built a life, you know, some of you built a family, you know, and, and by the way, you could build more than one of these, but some of you maybe fall into the career category. You build a career or maybe you haven't had that family yet. Maybe you've been too busy with your career and that's been the thing that maybe you need to say no to. Maybe God has a family next for you. You know, maybe you have a family, but you haven't really built a life, you know, because you've been too busy, you know, making it about something else that you haven't really built a life. A life, by the way, leaves legacy. And we're finding out the older that we get, that's really what's important. And uh, so, you know, maybe, maybe you've built a ministry, you know, all the charts are up right and to the right. I mean, I'm talking things are just fully maxed out. The pace has been increasing. It's been just steadily increasing the pressures, responsibilities, stress levels, all going up. Come on. Does this sound familiar? All going up, right? I got to keep going. I got my family, my career, my ministry, my life, right? I mean, I just, you know, I was going 50 miles an hour. Now I got to go 60. I was going 60 last month. Now I got to go 70, 70, 71. Can I get a 72, 72, 70? You know, you sound like an auctioneer is like next to you in life in the passenger seat, reading it to you. And then the pressures keep mounting up. Responsibilities keep mounting up. Stress levels keep going up. And my question is, does that sound like, does that sound like something that God's happy with? No. God, God didn't, doesn't want things on us that are going to stress us out, right? Or max us out. But it's where we are. And so we're going to talk about that, right? I think that we do it to ourselves. I mean, we do, right? Even if it's a God thing. Well, I think we get it flipped. We reverse the script. Instead of managing our time, we allow our time to manage us. And that's something I say a lot. Um, I'm mm-hmm. guilty of that. Um, I'll let things and circumstances manage. Okay, I'm starting out. You know, Maybe I'll start, okay, today I'm going to handle this. And I start that way, and then something pops up. And before I know it, I'm over here. And then something else pops up, and then I'm over here. And so I've let other things manage my time instead of taking control. Um, I'm kind of thinking about even when you're at the gym and you, you know, breathing's really, really important. And at some point you have to make the choice like, no, I'm not going to let my breathing take me off course. I'm going to control my breathing to bring me back down to be able to focus on what I'm doing. So I think it's very easy to allow those things to get out of control, but I think it's, you know, we got to quickly recognize those and then go, Hey, make those necessary adjustments. Yeah. Because if, Here's the thing that I've noticed that, you know, in my 49 and a half years on this earth, been in this place many a time. Whoa. Yeah. Did almost towards 50. 50. Five oh guys. <laughs> Just a number to me. <laughs> Just an, as long as it's like, as long as, you know, hopefully it's not the last number. But, you know, we, I've been here many times in my life and many times, I mean, many times this year, you know, you get there in different situations. Some are some more serious than others. You know, some are, so I've been in, in times where, you know, this just been a small season. I've noticed it and it's done a little small setback in the area of, of one of these things, maybe in my career or my family, you know, our marriage or ministry, things like that. And then of course, back in the day, you know, um, before I really learned some of these lessons, um, I mean, I found myself buried under these things. And so what happens is your life will spin out of control. And if the speed keeps accelerating, you know, eventually what happens, and this is where the, this is where the, the this is where it kind of culminates and it's time for a change. And maybe this is where some of you are coming out of 2021 into this new year. And of course you're determined, it's perfect time to talk about red light, green light, because you're determined to make a change. But you know, if you don't, if you don't put, if you don't put action steps and a process behind that determination, you'll find that just like most New Year's resolutions, by the end of January they begin to fade away. So it's not about just the determination; it's there. After the beginning of the year, people look at it and they they look at themselves in all aspects, you know, and they go, "I need a change." And that determination is there, but the process is not backing up. Your time still is bogged down, and so your things are accelerating. Speed is accelerating, and if it keeps happening, this is where the, this is where it culminates into. Eventually, you have to take a leap, and when you take a leap, your landing's not going to be pretty. That's where the that's where this all happens, right? The faster we go, the more spectacular the crash, and a more spectacular crash means more damage people for you right? For, for, for those around you. And I've been there. I've been going a thousand miles an hour 
couldn't handle it because God never meant for us to handle what he didn't put on us, what he didn't put in us. You got to get that. I want to say that again. God never meant for us to handle what he never gave us, what he never, what he never gifted us to do, what he never graced us to do. We, we've got God's grace that can allow us to do the supernatural. I mean, it can cause things to happen that you don't have the capability to do um, in yourself. But when you walk outside of his grace and you operate outside of his grace, then he's never gifted you, graced you, or gifted you to do that. Then that's where things get crazy, and we, you know, we have to. We eventually, we we'll take a leap, and the the landing is going to be hard. And then there's people around us that get damaged, and um, you know, the thrill of living, I guess, is being replaced by a, a sense of impending doom. And I think that that's where sometimes people get. Hopefully, this clarifies some things. This is not like designed to bring you down. This is designed to bring you out. Man, I'm going to say that again because that'll preach. This isn't designed to bring you down. It's designed to bring you out. Well, what do you mean? Well, you got to get the revelation, right? Knowledge isn't power, but applied knowledge, applied knowledge is power. And then the, the applied knowledge can bring you out. But I mean, many times we've been down this, this road where, you know, we've just been doing too much, even in the name of God, even in the name of church, even in the name of ministry, even in the name of good. Right. I think when we find ourselves in those positions, that's where, I mean, the scripture that comes to mind to me is not to go get weary and well-doing, that sometimes we can mm. be, you know, doing good things, right, in the name of the Lord. And I think when we do it within our own strength, that's where we teeter-totter between getting weary and being, you know, um, encouraged and pushed and strengthened by the Lord, that we're doing it in the name of the Lord with the right intentions and the right heart, but maybe it's not what God called us to do in that season. And here's the thing, I think there come seasons and times that there's certain seasons that God calls us to do certain things and be certain things to certain, you know, maybe ministries or people or your job or, or whatever, but then those seasons come and the grace is lifted and it becomes um, a burden you it, that what was you what you were set out to do to maybe lighten the burden for some or to help in a situation when that grace is lifted it becomes a burden on you and we don't even recognize it sometimes until we're weighted down which ch- causes us sometimes to end up um, I think resenting maybe what started out as a good thing resenting it or feeling like you know what am I doing or you know being angry about it so and I'm kind of thinking about even Mary and Martha. You know, she kind of, one was busy and the one was like, she's, she's, she's not doing anything. She's busy. You know, like that, that kind of conflict between, I think, Mary and Martha. I think we've got to be careful. I think there's been seasons that I've let serving overtake what God, because I'm, I'm an, I'm a server by nature, I think. Like I'm going to, if there's a need, I'm going to try and fix it. So I think that there's been seasons in my life that I've, st- I've stretched beyond the grace of God and I've done it because I've seen a need and I wanted to fill it, but it really wasn't what God was calling me to do. And I became almost a God to somebody else or an idol to somebody else where I was helping with a situation instead of allowing the Lord to work through me to minister to that person. Yeah. You know, it's funny. <clears throat> I had Mike bring up that scripture. You just mentioned that it wasn't in our notes, but we've always used this scripture. I know I have. But you just said it. When you said it, I don't even think you were you were pointing out the beginning of it. You know, don't let us not grow weary while doing good. You were, I think, you were bringing out that because we were talking, you know, about, um, you know, we we do things in the name of the Lord. We do things in the name of church in the name of good. But when you read that, when you said that scripture, I don't even think you you said the end of it. You just said, let us not grow weary while doing good. But then the second part of that scripture says, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. I've often looked at that and used that as in even other versions say if we don't quit, if we don't quit. So I've always used it from the perspective of keep going. But it doesn't say that exactly. It says, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we what? Do not lose heart. King James says, if we faint not. What does that mean? Well, what's one, what's one, what's one way you could collapse and pass out? I mean, if you run... A marathon, and then you get up right when that's over, and you run another. If I run one marathon, it's going to happen a half a marathon. But if you get up and you run another marathon immediately, I mean, eventually you're going to what? You're going to pass out. You're going to collapse, and so you won't be able to finish because you couldn't finish. And um, and so it's not just don't quit, like keep going, don't sit down, don't get lazy. We look at it from that perspective, and I think it might include that if we don't quit. But there's another there's another lane to that sermon or that scripture 
that says if we'll, we will reap if we don't faint, if we don't quit. Well, what causes you to quit? Losing heart. What causes you to losing heart? lose heart? When, when you can't handle it anymore. So sometimes you don't quit from we, we quit because you're just sitting around doing nothing and you're afraid to get started. That's just one aspect that we focus a lot on. The other aspect is when we're doing so much, we're burning the candle at both ends and we lose heart. And that is probably a big reason a lot of people quit. But if you don't lose heart, which is God's intention, then you will reap in due season. Amen. I just want 2022 to be a year where I'm constantly in season. I'm constantly in season. Whatever the season is, I'm constantly in his season. I believe that there's reaping that's going to go on in this in the year of 2022. And um, you know, I want to live, you know, of in at a sustainable pace. And 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 if I keep living at the current pace, you know, there may be a crash, right? If I if I if I'm simply got to, you know, learn to say no, then then that's then that's not a bad thing. Sometimes say no to what you've been saying yes. So think about this for a second. Think about changing your the lifestyle pace from hurry to a sustainable pace. Immediately think of the turtle in the race. I'm the turtle in this race of life with David. He's the rabbit. <laughs> but yet, but yet you've been exhausted in times too. I have, but I think it's about putting a steady pace and proper nutrition, spiritually, mentally, physically, emotionally. Um, so I think it's proper. It's all those things together allow you to keep the right pace. You know, starting out first with seeking the Lord. I think of anything this year, especially the beginning of this, you know, the year, the first few days of this, if you haven't already, is ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do this year? What are your goals? What are your plans? Jeremiah 29, he has plans for you. So ask him what his plan is. I think that's a big deal too, is I think sometimes we don't even ask or seek the Lord for his plan. We've already determined in our heart what we want to accomplish accomplish this year or, or, hey, I didn't accomplish that last year. So this year I'm going to make this a priority. I think one of the big things is seeking the Lord and set your priorities based on what you hear from him. If you don't know, I would say the first thing is God first, your spouse, your family, your career, your ministry, however that lines up in that. Um, you know, I think if you don't know yet, at least start with that, setting your priorities and maybe whatever your, those priorities or goals are set two ways that will help you accomplish them that you could start working on to go to. Cause you know, I, and pastor, our pastor spoke a message, but if you set a goal and you don't do anything to work towards it, it's just kind of a wish. Mm -hmm. So do you want to wish for 2022 to be better? Or do you want to set your pace to accomplish and achieve, not just wish? Cause I don't want to look back. There's things definitely that's 2021 ended that I I was like, man, I wish that would have happened. I wish I would have accomplished that. Well, this year for me, one of my my words is excellence. And everything that I do, let it be an excellent excellence, praiseworthy, because as I'm doing as unto the Lord, no matter what it is, that's one of my biggest, my biggest, like that's something that my focus is this year is whatever I do. And the Lord may ha have to bridle my tongue sometimes and bridle my attitude in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay, Lord. <laughs> But everything that hey, I do, I let it be it. praiseworthy, right? <laughs> mm, yeah. Preach so, your sister. <laughs> but, you know, I think you have to set, even if it's small right now, until you kind of figure out where you want to make the adjustments. But I don't want to enter into 2022. Well, we've already entered into it. But I don't want to carry the things that I didn't accomplish of 2021 into 2022. I want to set realistic goals, and I want to set a plan and a path to achieve them, not just wish about them. I was going to jump in and say, um, if you, as far as the pace goes, um, it's a lot like running. What I learned this past year was I wanted to, I set a couple of, um, workout goals for myself. And part of that was to increase my running time. Well, I think, and I don't have any stats to back this up, but I would probably guess that the reason that people hate running so much is it's so exhausting. And most people don't realize that when you first start running, you can't just go. If you want to run for a distance, you can't just go out and go run. Like you have to train yourself. You can't get to that pace until you've put in the work before it. So when you're talking about sp when you're talking about a sustainable pace, you have to find that. And sometimes that means slowing down. Sometimes that means not stretching yourself in every single area that you can possibly do, which is one of my downfalls because I will burn the candle at all three ends at the same exact time until there's nothing left in the wax. But 
when you to get to that sustainable pace, sometimes you have to just slow down. Don't hurry. Take take a moment, take a breath, and then set your pace slowly and then build it up. Don't try to go out of the gate as fast as you can because you're going to burn yourself out. I think warm up is the word that when you're saying that. Yeah. Because sometimes we just get in a race and start running, but we don't warm up. And a lot of times if you just run full steam without warming up, you hurt something. My old knees say that. You know, I was Diana's word, and it goes back with what both of you guys are saying. The word excellent. She said the word, her word is excellent. And I was thinking, you know, she wants to do everything with excellence. There's the, the whole, the old adage, I guess, or whatever, that, that quality over quantity came to mind. You know, excellence doesn't say quantity necessarily, but it does say quality. Yeah. And sometimes we, sometimes to get excellence, we might have to, trim back on some quantity so that we can preserve the quality. And so, you know, that's what I really heard out of the excellence. If you really want to do something with excellence, then you can't do it unless you trim back some of the, some of the quality, some, some of the quantity. And, um, and I, and I think, you know, this is maybe something to, 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 to get to, this is, this is, this is a, a goal with regards to this topic this week. When, when saying no to people is saying yes to God. Not saying no to people is saying yes to God, or not saying yes to people is saying yes to God. When saying no to people is saying yes to God. Those are the interchangeables. Like I know what I want to do is I want to look for, I want to keep the, the places where saying yes to people is saying yes to God. And saying yes to God is, you know, obviously saying yes to people. I want to get rid of the, when saying no to people is saying no to God. I want to I want to, I'm sorry, when saying no to people, saying yes to God, I want to interchange those. I want to substitute those out. That's how you get excellence because it's, it's like a culling effect where, you know, if you can only have room, if you have room for five, you know, fishermen do this when they go out and fish in tournaments, they have room for five. You can, you can catch, you know, five fish, but whoever, you know, out of all the teams, whoever's five fish weigh the most wins. Well, what they do is they call. They catch a fish, and then if they catch a bigger fish and a bigger, and then when they get to the place where they they see another big fish, but they have five fish, they throw the the lightest one away and they replace it, you know. And so then they they call, so that their overall weight is better. And I think that that's what we need to do with our priorities and our time. We need to go through and we need to call it. We need to go through and say, okay, I only have twenty four hours in a day. I don't want to, you know, I only have this much time when I'm not sleeping. This much, and you need you need to look at that and you need to prioritize it, but prioritize it with what God views as, as a priority. And, you know, this is a question you need to ask yourself. What, what do I do when I'm overbooked? What do I do when I'm overworked? What do I do when I'm overstressed? So here's the question. Are you doing more than God attended? Do you feel like you're constantly living in a rat race? When we originally said rat race, a couple months ago in uh, Diana's office when we were talking about these subjects, we talked about this and said the word rat race. I remember my daughter like, what's a rat race? You know, <laughs> because it's like a, it's like a terminology, you know, that, that maybe is not used as much, but it's like just a, just a fast paced, you know, chaotic, this earth, this world, this social media, everything. I gotta, I gotta play catch up. I can, I'm behind. I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. I'm going to miss out. And it, wouldn't it be great to think at the end of each day that we were leaving no, listen, important thing undone, Right that first things really were first. That's a, that's, a, that's a productive day. And everything else. You know, it's funny. It's interesting. Like the things that we try to so hard, you know, and I'm thinking like social media, different types of things like that. The things that we try so hard to make sure that we get in shift in a 24-hour cycle. They're, they're useless almost tomorrow. Think about that for a second, guys. The things that we try so hard are literally the news cycles. Here today, gone tomorrow. Here today, gone tomorrow. Headlines today, back page tomorrow. And yet we have to get them in, right, today. But yet, I want to make my day really count, right, where first things really were first. And and I don't think that... So looking at this, I guess, you know, this week, Diane, I'll let you get the final word here. I don't think God ever... And we got a lot this week we're going to go over. We're going to give you points and tips. I've got a lot of different strategies and tips, things you can write down, actionable things that you can walk away with. They're going to help all of us, I believe. But can I just say, I don't think God ever drives us to the point of burnout. He never burns us. He never gives us more, right? Things that are beyond our strength or ability. 
He always provides. His grace is sufficient. He's not a God of burnout. Yeah, I agree. He doesn't burn out. And he, his intention is for us to not burn out. Amen? I agree. I think that that's probably, you know, we feel like we have to compete with a lot of different things. People, you know, financially, maybe job, career. You know, there's one word, and, and I don't know where it'll fit in exactly, but I thought of quick fi- fixes versus long-term sustainable. So I think sometimes we're looking for quick fixes, so we just quickly respond or do something instead of taking the time to go, is this the right path? Is this what God's calling me to? Because everything that is could be a good thing and it may be a godly thing, but it might not be what God's calling to you in this season. So I think it's okay that if you don't know, take us, you know, pause for a second, let the yellow light caution you and then determine what path you're going to take. Um, I think a lot of people are entering into 2022 with forks in the road and some adjustments that they're having to make and some choices they're having to make. And so don't be quick to do that. I think take a moment. It's okay to take a moment. Now, I have a tendency to take a moment and the moment passes me by because I I question a lot of things. So I think when you're in those seasons, if you have forks in the road, if you're starting 2022 with forks in the road, I think you have to seek the Lord and, and wise counsel around you. If you're married, your spouse, you and your spouse need to be, you know, praying and asking, you know, how, what, what direction, you know, if you have mentors or, you know, pastors, seek counsel from them, people that you trust, people that don't have an agenda over it. They just honestly want God's best for you. So I think to me, I feel like forks in the road are a big deal right now. And so I'd say, don't be quick to respond and get a quick fix. Think about the long-term impact. Yeah. To replace the forks in the road with knives. Let's start cutting some stuff out. What do that's you think? That's good. Huh? Yeah, that's pretty good. That Every good. once in a while I get a good one. All right. Mike? Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys are enjoying this series. We hope you guys are having a wonderful new year. Let me run through a couple of things and we will be out of here. Too. If you guys would like, we have a daily encouragement text that goes out every single morning that you can opt into for free. You can text the letters EZGC to 813-522-3356. If you are in our live audience, thank you guys for being with us every day. We always appreciate it. But if you guys cannot make it to the live streams, you can always keep up with us in two ways. Number one, Go to YouTube, search Game Changer Podcast Live, and then go to our channel, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell so you get notified because we upload the replays of these episodes every single day. You can also go onto your favorite audio podcasting platforms, Apple Podcasts being the biggest one for us, and hit the subscribe button on our feed because we also upload these episodes every day so you have it on the go. If you're watching or listening to this episode on replay, you can always join us live when we do these shows at 8.30 a.m. EST on Facebook and YouTube Live. Just search Game Changer Podcast Live, and we will show right up. As we go into the new year, I've talked about it the past couple of weeks. It's still our featured Bible plan blueprint. It's a five-day um, reading plan on version, the Bible app. It is the perfect thing that you guys can read through to start your day or start not start your day well start your day yeah that too but start your year out as you read through like what god's blueprint is for your life how he lays the plans out and just how he works everything in your favor for his plan for you so make sure that you guys go check it out read through it let us know what you guys think of it but thank you all for tuning in today we hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning and on that note we out